Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. We're here in the uh, middle of the galaxy. What are we doing? We're watching The Political Vigilante. Thank you so much for supporting the show, you guys. Progressive Comedy Tour, November 2nd and 3rd. Ron Placone and I are going to Sacramento, November 2nd, and San Francisco, November 3rd. Tickets are at GrahamElwood.com. And also the January Florida leg of the Progressive Comedy Tour, January 9th. We are in Gainesville, the 10th we're in um, Coral Gables, the 11th Orlando, and the 12th Jacksonville. Again, go to GrahamElwood.com. Our goal for 2019 is to have a progressive comedy tour once a month, go some different part of the country we haven't been to before. We're working on Hawaii for February. Uh, that's weird. It's cold waves in California, so we're gonna just happen to set one up in Hawaii in February. I don't know, just how the logistics worked. Um, so check that out, and we're looking to go to other places, the East Coast. We've talked about Texas and uh, the middle of the country. We're, we're looking for a bunch of other places. So that's why you're here. You're watching The Political Vigilante. Oh, where's the logo? What happened to the logo? The logo's dead, everybody. I don't know what <laughs> happened to the logo. It just nothing happened. Well, we got this logo. Well, we'll always have this logo. All right, let's go to this. This was submitted... Um, uh, by Patreon supporter, let me make, make sure I got the name right, Alex Talk. Um, this came out Friday uh, the 19th. Uh, the Mueller Report, prepare for disappointment and be forewarned that the special counsel's findings may never be made public. Oh, man. This is, they've been talking about this Russia thing for over two years. Since before the election, but really what they did is they made it clear, I mean, in the Podesta emails right after Hillary lost that this was going to be their angle. Russia, 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 Russia. And of course, where is the DNC fraud lawsuit? Where is the fact that they stole the primary? That should be the biggest crime. That, should, that is the biggest crime in the history of this country. And then we're not talking about it. This is what's in the article, which is in the show notes below. While Robert Mueller is under no deadline to complete his work, several sources tracking the investigation say the special counsel and his team appear eager to wrap up. <laughs> Why? Uh, we've been talking about this. And this article goes into it. Everyone's expecting this big bombshell and it's just going to go to Congress and there's going to be a whole thing and... Impeachment, there's not, they're not finding anything. And they're not even compelled to open it up. Because this is like, you know, Trump said, I mean, he was, he was planning on losing. If you remember, leading up to that, he was planning on losing and was like, I was already saying, oh, I'm going to investigate, you know, this is going to be a rigged election. I'm going to, if I lose, I'm going to say it's a rigged election. He then got Hillary to say, oh, I'll really accept the re re election results. Remember one of those um, debates? They said, will you accept the re election results? And she said, of course I would. She knew she thought she was going to win. She didn't win. And then this, bus this business starts. It's unreal. How can... And now her and her husband want to go on some speaking to her? Isn't her approval rating like somewhere in the mid-30s right now? Nobody wants her to run again. And now this. Like, what's Rachel Maddow going to talk about? I mean, God forbid she talks about Yemen and the Saudis and the defense contractors that are pushing that. Oh, wait. They buy ad time on her network. Oh, damn it. The government investigation experts are waving a giant yellow caution flag now to warn that Mueller's no comment mantra is unlikely to give way to a tell-all final report and accompanying blitz of media interviews and public testimony on Capitol Hill. See, this is what happens, the Democratic Party, right? They, they lie, they cheat in their own primary, we could have Bernie in the White House right now. And people have said to me, well, what would you, you know, let's say Bernie did win. What could he get accomplished? First, I'd say like anyone else is getting anything accomplished. 
Our system is so perfect, everything is running smoothly. But here's what would happen. And I want you to remember this because if we actually get a shot at putting a real progressive in the White House, and if anyone says, oh, they won't be able to get Congress to work, remember this. Had Bernie won, his whole cabinet would be progressive. He would have Stephanie Kelton probably as the, the Secretary of Treasury, probably Tulsi Gabbard as Secretary of Defense. He wouldn't have uh, Betsy DeVos and her 10 yachts as the Secretary of Education. So all of his cabinet posts would be, would be stocked full of progressives. And then let's say the House and the Senate are all Republican. Well, look, look, what, look what Bernie did, right? He got $15 an hour out of Amazon. He did the Stop Bezos Act. So he would be doing all of the, the that hasn't even been a vote. They didn't even, he just introduced it, got a lot of press. Bezos went to $15 an hour, which is a small victory. It's not, it's, it's you know, there needs to be massive things happening, but, but let's just show how powerful Bernie is just from doing that as an independent senator from Vermont. Imagine if he was the president. He would just go to the American people, hey, I want to give you $15 an hour minimum wage. I want to give you Medicare for all. I want to give you free college tuition. Your Congress and senators aren't, aren't doing it. They, they, then you would have a blue wave this November. We're not going to have one. We're not going to have one. We might, win, we might get some progressives in here and there, but any, it's, the Democrats are probably going to get shelled because they keep running on this corporate anti-Trump platform. If the Democratic Party after the 16 election went, all right, that's it, we're done. We're going progressive. And they just were like, single payer health care, $15 minimum wage, free college tuition. They would just be, they would be crushing people. It would have been a wave of progressives in the, in the primaries and they would be gearing up here to just crush everybody. They wouldn't lose. But instead they banked every, they put all their money on this fucking thing, the Russia thing which most Americans don't give a shit about. I mean, Nina Turner said it on MSNBC earlier in the year and she got smeared for it, but she said people don't care. They're, they're, they're barely able to pay their bills. They're trying to take away Obamacare. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't have time for this Russia Mueller thing. I don't have time for it. And this is the process that, that this shows why it won't, it's not, it doesn't seem like anything big is gonna happen. He, which is Mueller, must notify his Justice Department supervisor, currently Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, on his budgeting needs and all significant events made by his office, including indictments, guilty pleas, and subpoenas. When Mueller is finished, he must turn in a confidential report explaining the prosecution or declination decisions, essentially why he chose to bring charges against some people but not others. His reasoning, according to veterans of such investigations, could be as simple as there wasn't enough evidence to support a winning court case. Why aren't we doing this with the DNC? Because there's enough supporting evidence for him to make indictments? Had he investigated the DNC? which they say, oh, we're, we're a private organization. We can run it how we want. No, 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 not when you take public funding. When you take public funding, which the, both parties do for their primaries, then you're not, you're not a, a private organization. You're taking tax dollars, which means then you're subject to the rules of being a public organization. This is what else he's got to do. Then it's going to be up to the DOG leaders to make the politically turbocharged decision of whether to make Mueller's report public. Government officials will first get a chance to scrub the special counsel's findings for classified details, though, involving, ah, well, that right there. Well, we found, cla it's, there's classified stuff, that's why. It's national security. That's the old, the good old excuse. Even if it isn't, if there's just damning information that shows how corrupt everybody is, Trump, the Clintons, everybody else. No, it'll, well, it's classified. It's a state secrets. It's, sorry, you're, you're, we're trying to keep you safe. That's why you're not getting any transparency on this kleptocracy and the oligarchs that run it. Um, <laughs> involving everything from foreign intelligence sources to information gleaned during grand jury testimony that the law forbids the government from disclosing. Isn't that convenient? They'll also have to weigh the input from a number of powerful outside sources. <laughs> All bullshit. Some of the central players in the Russia saga say they too have become resigned to not getting a complete set of answers out of Mueller's work. 
I assume there are going to be lots of details we'll never learn and lots of things we'll, that'll never come to light, said Robbie Mook, Clinton's 2016 campaign manager. Well, we tried. So he's probably happy. He's like, well, the distraction worked. No one's talking about how we stole the primary. You know, everyone's talking about uh, election rigging by the Republicans, which is good. They look like they do a lot of cheating, but no one's talking about the Democratic cheats. No, but Debbie Wasserman Schultz isn't in this report because they didn't really investigate them. The Podesta emails are the Podesta emails. They say what the Clinton campaign was doing. This Russia thing was their, was their backup plan. It was funny, like, like that's what Trump was going to say. Oh, the, the whole thing's rigged by the Clintons. And then they lost and they said, oh, it's all rigged by the Russians. And now we're amping up this Red Scare 2.0, so defense contractors. You know, all those defense contractors that donate to the Clinton Foundation the, the, so they can still... She made promises, man. That was the deal. You donate to the Clinton Foundation when she becomes president, as she did when she was Secretary of State and Senator, will push your corporate war machine agenda. Well, she didn't win, so now she's like, I got to do something. So Russia, 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 Russia. So thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you for contributing. Please go to the Patreon page. There's a lot of great ways to support the show. Like, subscribe. Even if you've subscribed before, I was unsubscribed from the Jimmy Dore show. Hit the bell notification thing. They might, may, may or may not notify you, but it's the best we can do at this point. I do the super chats every Sunday. Um, so we'll keep going. Unless, unless Russia takes over this channel. <gasps> Dosvidanya, comrades.